So what we have here is a shoulder of specially selected pork. What we've already done is we've removed the shoulder blade and the surrounding muscles and we've utilised them for something else. So what we want to do is set this to one side and we'll use it for something later. And what we want to show you is this centre neck piece which is within the animal. If you imagine this being the equivalent of a neck of lamb, so very, very tender when cooked slowly, flakes apart beautifully. What we want to do is prepare it for a small roasting joint. So with it being the pork shoulder, we've got various muscles all in together, a lot of intermuscular fat, a lot of muscles that need slow cooking and broken down. But we also have a lot of things that we don't want to be eating and we don't want to be cooking. We've got this dry outer meat here where the uh, animal was cut in half. We've got blood spots, gristle. If we turn over onto the other side, you can see a lot of the same. So we want to remove this before we start roasting. What we can do, obviously I'm exposing quite a lot of lean meat here just now. What we can do is take a piece of fat or a piece of pig skin from another part of the animal and utilise it and sit it on top to roast. You can see in here, there's a bit of bruising that we don't want, so we're as well just taking that away. So we're just going to square it off, and again, just looking to remove any pieces that we don't want for later, anything that won't eat nicely. With a cut like this, a bit of trimming in this does take a bit of time, but afterwards it will be worth it when it comes to cutting and plating for the customer. I'm just going to remove some of this dry patch here, but underneath, as you can see, there's a lovely layer of fat in there which we're going to leave on. Same with the fat through here. We're just going to take a very light shaving off of that, get rid of the dry piece, and we're going to leave the rest of that for roasting. A little blood spot in here. Tip of the knife in to remove that. And whilst trimming the pork shoulder, I'm really trying to not cut into any muscles. Obviously then as it cooks, it's just a, an exit point for the moisture. There we are. One more little piece there. Okay, so now... We want to just tie this up for roasting. Now again, when we're tying this particular piece of meat, we're only doing it so it holds a shape. If we tie it in tightly together, all that's going to happen is that as that meat expands during cooking, the moisture is going to be pushed out. So really what we want to do is just put a knot around it loosely to give it a nice uniform shape for cooking. Shoulder of pork is terrific as a roast on its own, but of course it can be used for pulled pork uh, or various, various things like that. The muscles that are in it, they do do a lot of work when the animal's alive and therefore they do need a bit of cooking to be broken down to be made tender. And I'm only tying this just until I feel it come together. We don't want to be pulling the muscle in tight. We don't want big indentations where the string is. That would show that we've tied it too tight. So as you can see, the way that this has been tied, there's still a lot of flexibility. I can get my finger underneath there, but it does leave it as a nice uniform shape so that it'd be easy carve. Nice even portions, we'll just square off the ends, the ends of which would be lovely to be used for burgers or you know, if we make sure there's any further pieces of, of gristle or silver skin removed, but that there is a beautiful piece of slow roasting pork shoulder.